Hello everybody, Darren here, and welcome back to City Skylines 2. Now, in the previous episode, we built out a new high school and its surrounding infrastructure, complete with its own tennis courts, basketball courts, public transport connections, and numerous pedestrian access points. We also started work on specialized industry, creating our first industrial farms and quarries, and today the plan is to heavily expand that area to really utilize the potential of various fertilities we have out there. We're also going to be building out many new services, such as the post delivery, radio towers, and creating various districts and setting up the policies for them. Most importantly, we're going to be also growing the town by adding a brand new college with its own amenities, as well as new estates with a capacity of about 3,000 residents in total. First off, we just have a quick time lapse of the industrial expansion before then we're going to jump into the gameplay proper. A quick reminder that if you're enjoying the series, it'd really make my day if you liked the video and if you subscribed. Because of the huge support in the last couple of videos passing 100,000 subscribers, I've also been able to dedicate more time to the series and get it out faster. Also, if you missed an episode or want to check out how I did something before, remember to check out the playlist. Alright, let's begin. So to kick things off, I just have a very quick time lapse, just a couple of minutes here of expanding out the specialized industry that we'd started to build at the tail end of the previous episode. So the majority of the fertilities here are being used for grain and vegetables. And then just kind of on the outer edges of those fertilities, I've just decided to put down livestock farms and pad it out all the way to the edges of the road, just to make it look kind of like natural and like it's one big farm. I decided for the time lapse because it is quite repetitive not to just show every single node being placed and pushed up against the road that I would just show you one example of each type of industry. So that was the farms. Now we have the forestry. Huge abundance of wood and forestry, dense forestry in the map here. So I decided to put down five lumber mills. Is that what they're called, I guess? Forestry huts. And yep, these ones took quite a while as well. They've got a big radius and I wanted them to kind of push up against each other so we had a clean texture from each boundary to boundary. So really happy with how that's start starting to take shape there. And then I decided to add a little bit extra stone as well. So alongside the original stone mine that we have, just built another one out right next to it. Also continuing the project of the outer bypass, the idea was that this highway is going to wrap around the town and connect to the northern part of it. So it needs another interchange to be able to kind of come in towards the industrial area as well. This is just in order to, well, we'll talk about it later in the episode, but I'm anticipating that all of this industry is going to need to kind of be able to export its goods. So you'd want to give them a nice big road infrastructure and access to the highway so they can kind of go north, west, east or south without really affecting the town itself. So that's pretty much everything I worked on in between episodes. We'll take a look more in depth right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the new specialized industrial sector has been approved, built, and is ready to ramp up production, but time is still paused for now. Before we let time play, I wanted to do a quick assessment of our current situation so that we can get a better understanding of some of the problems we face and see some of the cause and effect from what we choose to build, where it's placed, and the supporting infrastructure it has. So, let's take a look. Over in the population demographics tab, we have an embarrassing situation happening right now. 3,800 total population with an unemployment rate of 17.7%. Damn! People are calling for my head over at the mayor's office. It's our greatest failure. And I'm going to say our, placing the blame on you guys as well. Even though it's totally, it's pretty much all on me. Uh, but that's what politicians do. They push around the blame. So... I would say that as we're about to leave summer and enter into fall in the next couple of minutes, that our mission statement should be to get unemployment down to, I'd say, 7%, that seems reasonable, slash the unemployment rate. And I think we're going to be able to do just that, hopefully. If we take a look at workplace availability, we can actually see a heat map now of where all the jobs are. So we still have a decent amount of open positions still here in the center of the town itself, in the commercial sector, in the industrial sector. We've got a bright new hotspots in the industrial sector that we've just basically were about to open for business. Another interesting thing in looking at these numbers here is that we have 3,200 jobs. We have 2,400 people employed. So why don't they just take the 800 or so jobs that are available? Well, education is the problem, isn't it? Effectively, we have open positions here for well-educated and also for poorly educated that people aren't taking. There's actually a lot in the uneducated category that people aren't taking, about 300. That's quite an interesting one because it means that we're actually over-educating some people and they're moving up the ladder, as it were, and they're not taking any of the lower rung jobs. Now, they will eventually, apparently, to their... Dis what's the word? 
To their dismay, they'll be quite unhappy about that and they will complain about it, but they will eventually take some of the lower down positions. But ideally, we want to just bring in people that will take those jobs naturally and give the people with the higher education jobs that they deserve? Is that the right word? Something like that. Anyways, let's let time play. We're about to roll over into fall, as I said. We should see the leaves turning colors and stuff like that. Now, I hadn't let time play just yet. If we have a look at some of the industries here and just do a quick recap, we've effectively got grain, grain, and vegetables. These will be our three specialized industries that are going to require an actual fertile territory or land right beneath them. So they're going to be happy with those. These ones do not. These are livestock, and they are not sitting on fertile territory right now. That's why they're on the far bounds of the actual fertile fertility spot. It's hard to see because we've built over it now, but some people were worried that I was building livestock over it. Don't think I did. Maybe a slight bit on the edges, but not, not too, nothing too crazy. Effectively, then, we've got five forestry buildings up and running as well. And again, these are all now hiring and open to a lot of new positions and employees coming in. They actually ramp up over time, so they'll start off with just 20 or 30 spots, and then eventually as they level up, they typically add more and more workplaces. One of my favorites would be the coal area up here, 190 positions in total, 88 have just been filled. So that's pretty damn good. So we've now got coal industry up and running out here. We have five logging industry, and then we have two stone industry down here. Another couple hundred positions on that. This one was set up first, and you can see it's level, you know, two and a half. Let's say level two, because that's what it says, uh, out of a potential five. That is 109 employees, whereas this one is only level one, and it's only going up to 70. So I would imagine, even just letting time play right there, we've already brought unemployment way down to 8.3%. That is how you politic, my friends. So people are going to be loving it. So the next thing I wanted to do is actually create some districts to create some delineating lines and policies between our different areas here. So we just built out the high school along with its amenities, the basketball courts, tennis courts, and so on. A few shops out in the center, some higher density living space for people who may be students renting, whatever the case might be. We set up our first transport routes. We have the... Uh, we actually didn't name the bus lines thinking about it, but we've got the kind of more green bus going around counterclockwise and then the regular bus, the blue bus, going around clockwise. And they're pretty much overlapping on most streets, but not totally. Uh, something else I just thought we should mention on the topic of industry before I move away from this area right now is we got to think about how we're going to handle the, um, the increased traffic from all of this. This is why I built out the highways and added a new intersection down here, a brand new one up here, and the plan is to eventually collect connect this road this highway all the way over to the north because what i'm finding and i don't know if we'll see it right now is that a lot of trucks are coming through here no that's a totally fine one this one here we go a lot of trucks are coming through here being a bit cheeky this one's coming from a town called milford and going to round rock it's got nothing to do with my place it's not even carrying anything it's just coming through my map and my town and my busy streets for free um, transporting stuff from A to B, right? It's not got nothing to do with us. Now, it's interesting because a lot of trucks... Ca so, basically, the idea is if we connect up the bypass, I'm hoping they don't go through the town. That's the point there. Before I get ahead of myself, I was going to have a look at the tonnage that these trucks carry. Typically, it's 25 tons. If we have a look at our production metrics now, we can see that logging is up to 478 tons per month. Now, remember, a month is a day in-game, but basically a month so one day night cycle that's going to go through that's a lot you know that's 500 and that's going to go up even higher i reckon it could even hit a thousand by the end of this episode and we've added 400 rock and 400 coal soon to be you know it's at 300 now but it'll ramp up as they fill up their employees uh livestock and so on and so forth the, the point is we're adding a lot of trucks potentially now apparently there's like an export bug in the game where things aren't getting exported correctly Let's just pretend they are, because they will probably patch it and fix it eventually if it is broken. So don't worry about any bugs right now. I'm not 100% sure what it, even the bug is, so I don't want to comment on it because I don't know. But if we were to assume that all of that tonnage that we're creating isn't going into any of our buildings because it's in the surplus category, then you would expect that we're going to have a heavy, hefty volume of traffic leaving our town, exporting all of this stuff off to the edges of the map or to a cargo train terminal perhaps in the future, which can carry a huge amount rather than having just 25 tons per truck. Obviously, I can't remember the exact numbers, but I want to say it's like 300 or something 
on the cargo trains. So obviously you want to get that set up in the future. And that's what this sort of space is left blank here for. I feel like a train would work really well in and around this area and be able to carry off a majority of the stuff away. And if we travel it sort of parallel or bring it sort of parallel along the highway, that could be a great way to get it out in the future. Anyway, just food for thought, just so people know where my head's at, what I'm thinking of in the future. But nothing is set in stone, as it were, no pun intended, right now. All right, so let's get to creating these districts. So we have the area tool, the district creation tool. I think the very first one will be simple enough. We can pop it in the center of the roads, actually. And we'll just make a little district here for the small suburban area that we have. And yeah, I guess we'll have to just stop it right around here, actually. Can I get rid of that one? There we go. I'll just bring this down to somewhere like here. And... Do they want to have the car park? I guess not, right? So bring this across again, down, and then just follow the roads out. And that'll be our first little district. Lilac Acres. That's kind of nice. It's all right. I'll leave it for now. We can maybe name these in the future. The next one will be the big suburban row housing that we have here. Uh, so we kind of want to give that its own thing as well. So I guess we could start on the same point. Create a new district. We'll just go to here. Follow the snapping to the roads is usually the best way to do this. All right. So there we go. Beechwood Gardens. That's a very fancy name for what that place ultimately is, which is just people packed like sardines in a can <laughs> together. But it's all right. It's not too bad, actually. They have decent gardens. They could be even smaller, and we might do that in the future. Some people have said for row housing, if you want to go with an authentic English look, you wouldn't even have the gardens at the back. You would just zone it to three. These are zoned to five, and they could be zoned to six uh, grids across. Give them even bigger gardens. If you zone it to four, they basically just lose the garden bit on the end, and they have a bunch of sheds at the back. These garages or garages, if you're American. These little shed things. And that can look a bit weird, so you can bring it right into just three, I think, and then it's just the house all the way along. So that's really densely packing them. Now, I've heard, although I haven't actually tested it, that the less land and zones you give a particular home, the less value that home has, which would make sense. And it'll attract people of lesser wealth overall, uh, which is kind of interesting to think about. It's like, okay, if we make an even denser pocket of these types of houses, the wealthier people should go for the ones with the gardens. I mean, that kind of makes sense, but it also depends on location and a few other factors. All right, so that's just two districts done. Let's keep going and uh, do the commercial sector next, and then we'll separate that out from the industrial sector. So we'll bring this along, I guess, to maybe uh, about there, and we'll just cut that across to here, bring it straight over. All right, so we have Briarwoods, Briarwood Heights. Not a fan of that name. That one's definitely changing. Uh, we have Elk Street and Kent Street. Kent Street actually rolls all the way down this way, so... I don't know what I have against the word briar, but I'm just going to call it Elkwood Heights. <laughs> which Elkwood, I don't even think makes sense, but that's fine. Just something better to look at, at least for me. Uh, for a while, until we come up with a better name. Again, comments are definitely welcome on that, and suggestions. I love using suggestions that people have. And I've been reading all the comments. I read all my comments, by the way. A lot of people... A lot of YouTubers... I mean, people say that YouTubers don't. I don't. I can't speak for other people, but I read all my comments. The only things I don't read are replies. Um, not to me or to anything like that. It's just the replies to each other or even replies to me. I'll tend to miss. I tend to see new comments. That's basically what I see regardless of what video it's on because the YouTube Creator Studio app, which is like a little app on your phone just for creators, will just pull your channel stats. And one of the first things it shows you every time you log in is recent comments. And it doesn't matter how old the video is. It's just whatever the latest comment is. And as a YouTuber of my size, I get about eh, maybe 40 a day, something like that on average, because I don't upload every day. Um, so it's quite easy. Sunset Town, that's quite a nice play a name for industry. How about Sunset Town? Um, yeah, that's quite a nice name for that, actually. Although it's weird. Gas Town would probably be better with all the chimney stacks. It's very Mad Max-like. Uh, where was I going with that? But anyway, yeah, long story short, I see your comments. Even if it's like a, if you're watching this and it's six months old and you write a comment, I probably saw it, you know? I, I probably saw it. Um, I don't reply to everything, of course, but I try to give them likes if I um, agree or uh, want to say, just let people know, uh, yeah, I've, I've noted this, you know, stuff like that. But I, I read pretty much everything. 
Uh, so don't be afraid, basically, to comment because it does, uh, it helps. And I basically do YouTube so I can see what people think of what I do. <laughs> um, all right. If they took away comments, I honestly don't know if I'd continue doing YouTube. For reals. And I can't believe some people turn off their comments. It's like, what's even the point? If you're just like a regular creator, I can understand maybe some companies doing it. Anyways. Right. So there we go. So we have Sterling Meadows, Sunset Town, Elkwood Heights, Sh Lilac Acres. I was going to say Shady Acres. Well, you know what? we got to call this Shady Acres. Always have Shady Acres in my game somewhere. So we'll just call the... I don't think even doing this will do anything to do with the farms. If there's any industrial policies. But we'll call that Shady Acres. All right, so the great thing about this is that now we have district policies available to us. So, for instance, we saw a couple of car accidents happening at the roundabout here, and there was actually another one going on at the same time here when we looked at it in the previous episode. So, we want to tell people to slow down. Excuse me. So, we can have a roadside parking fee charge people for parking here you could do that and apparently there's like very little benefit if you're just looking to min max the game definitely turn that on but i'm trying to play it a little bit more realistically so let's say like no, there's no roadside parking fee for your own estate but there is speed bumps reduces the speed of vehicles driving within the district this lowers the chance of accidents and brings noise pollution down significantly so i would hope yep that'll cut down on speeding hooray for speed bumps says archibald haley where are you living in a district that has nothing to do with it they're just happy to hear it which is fine. In fact, they might get their own district that does the same th similar thing in the future. But for now, we'll just make this one district until we decide to carve it up a bit. Okay, so the next one then would be... That's Beechwood Heights. Lila Garden, similar situation, I would say. Speed bumps. We can't do the heavy traffic ban yet. Not that I feel like that would ever happen in here anyway. But it would be nice to just assign that kind of thing anyway in the future. Elkwood Heights. This will have the roadside parking fee. Because we have car parks set up. Designated areas for you to park. And if we expand this out, we can actually set the fee to be quite high. I'm going to bring it all the way up to 30. Could go even higher, but let's just be reasonable about it. So it's fairly high, but it's not insane. <laughs> it's kind of insane. All right. Recycling. Reduce the amount of resources used, but decreases their free time. Why is that a problem for me? I guess they don't go to pay money at leisure places maybe as much. Yeah, you know what? Maybe recycle. Actually, you know, we'll do it in the more bougie place. It's not that bougie, but a little bit more maybe than them. They So they're all about the recycling over at Lilac Acres. <laughs> all right, Elkwood Heights. We have the parking. Nothing else really needed in there. Sunset Town. We could mandate recycling in here. Reduce the amount of used resources, but decreases free time. Don't really get what free time means in regards to an industrial sector. Citizens are advised to pay attention to the use of electronic devices. Electricity consumption is reduced by 5%. Sure. In Sunset Town. I'm supposed to save power, but my fridge has the only working light in my apartment. <laughs> that's, that's kind of sad. Um, <laughs> well, there you go. All right, Sterling Meadows. Final thing here. I don't think they... Yeah, roadside parking fee for here. Would probably be fair. Eh. No, we'll leave. We'll leave them because it's it's all going to change soon enough, so we don't have to do anything with them. And then here, I think similar thing. They don't really need anything. But what's cool now is we can actually check demographics of like who's working where. So there's 146 uneducated people working 145 positions. Not really sure how that's happening. It might be the case that oh, it's just balanced back out. So. It's kind of cool because you can actually check where people work and where they live and how they not necessarily how they get to work, but you can kind of see on residents the education and then for employees you can then kind of see the education as well just for that district and where they're going to take their jobs it's quite interesting i need to look at this a bit longer and wonder for instance at beechwood gardens there's only 10 employees yeah because that that makes sense they're only working in the school right so that's total that totally makes sense there's 10 people working there the question I would have is, are those 10 people coming from this district? Probably not. They probably live in other places as well, potentially. Elkwood Heights, being our commercial zone, has nearly 1,081 potential employees at currently at 945. So we can see just in this area, what do we need more of, right? So we're lacking on the well-educated category. And I would imagine that's to do with some of the offices that we zoned out this way. If I was to just take a guess they're the ones that are going to be looking for well-educated. 
So in that regard, you can sort of think of things and think like, okay, well, how do I get more educated people in this region or close to this region so that people's commute isn't as far? So you can kind of plan out where you develop and where you place education buildings based on that, I think. So we'll be kind of using those metrics in the future. All right, so that's our districts done. The next thing I wanted to do is actually unlock the larger roads because I talked about how we're going to have these lots of trucks coming through. So we get large roads, very wide multi-lane roads. I thought about, by the way, doing what we talked about, which was getting a fire station or a firefighter helicopter de depot. Turns out we don't even have the money for one of those buildings. A fire station is something like two million. So I just don't have the money for it. And we're actually losing a little bit of money right now. Some people suggested building a hydroelectric dam, exporting the power, all this stuff. Again, I'm just trying to be like fairly kind of realistic. I just don't think we need a hydroelectric dam right now. I think that'd be a bit big for this town. Although, granted, some of these are placed in places where there are no towns, so I suppose you could have that, but I'm not going to rush it, rush towards that or anything. I don't think we'll probably even turn a profit until we get to probably around Big Town is when we'll start actually making money. Um, so if we're not making money by then, we've got serious problems, but we should be making money by then, I hope. But also the economy is still in flux in terms of the game's patches and everything, so I wouldn't worry too much. We're up to 600 production of uh, wood now. And it looks like we don't have a deficit in any of these categories. So even vegetables and stuff is getting its demands met. So I, I forgot to mention, there is actually another fertility area just here. Fertile area. So we could set up another vegetable farm there. I wanted to leave it for a while and see what we needed. So it looks like, yeah, vegetables, that kind of thing might be needed over there in the future. As it's our lowest producer right now. Okay, so what was next? I uh, wanted to fix some roads now that we've gotten that. So... Basically, we have this roundabout here. We left room on either side, and I did that on purpose because we know that this road may end up expanding in the future. Uh, less so maybe this one, although we could always get rid of the path and expand if we really had to. And who knows, in the far-flung future, this could be all a massive urban sprawl. But for now, what we'll do is just beef up these roads and roundabouts because they're going to need it. And I would say make this a large one, the largest it can be. All right, so as easy as that. Now we have large roads. We can go with six lane roads. So I think six lanes here is probably good. So it's, it's already got three on one side and then two. So we're not upgrading even that much. And unfortunately, it does this thing where it wants to move one way or the other. But if we turn off that snap, and we can still just kind of center it and keep it the way it was, as, as it were, by keeping that center line in the same spot. I don't know why it doesn't just let me do that sometimes, but sometimes it just doesn't. Um, all right, and then we'll just line this one up Let's turn back on snapping now and see, can we get it to align? Nah. And if I drag even here, it's like, nope, got to be one side or the other. Uh, okay, so that's existing geometry and zoning cell length. Let's turn that one off. No. What about that one and that one? That kind of helps. So it's existing geometry means it's still going to try and snap to other things, but it doesn't really matter, I don't think. All right, cool. And the zoning is now aligned anyway, so I did that well enough, I think. Right, man, we've been covering a lot, a lot of small things. Um, I don't think we need to upgrade... We'll probably have to upgrade this road and bring it down this way because we're going to build a college out in this district here before we do that. Let's check on a few other things and how they're going that we built in the previous episode. So we added the taxi depot, which has 12 taxis out and about right now, and also a bus depot. Now, someone also brought up in the comments that you can add the dispatch center. Allows taxis to pick up passengers from all over the city. So I actually, it's a great comment because I thought that was just a standard, but it's not. They only use the taxi stands until you put the dispatcher in. And the dispatcher is quite expensive. It's like 12,000 upkeep per month. It's a damn good salary. Well, I suppose you could say there's a few of them. Um, yeah, eight employees at the moment, 12 vehicles in use. So a lot of them are getting used even though they've only got the one area. But a dispatcher will mean that they'll just go anywhere they need to in the city. Or... We could save the money, seeing as we're on a bit of a budget right now, even though it's getting better actually, which is nice, and just put down another taxi stand somewhere else. Uh, so there's a taxi stand out here by the high school. I think one in the commercial area would be good, would make sense. Uh, I was trying to think, should it go maybe near enough to the... Yeah, I'm just trying to think what road will get less use. So there's the medical center here. Seems like a taxi that could get pick people pick people up from there would be a good thing. Don't you think? I think so. All right, so let's do that then. A sheltered one as well. They deserve it. All right, so it's going to get rid of that um, kind of grass and stuff we had there, but 
being outside the medical center, being center lined or fairly central to our commercial area, I think is good for them as well. All right, so we might see some taxis pulling up that way. So I'm going to keep an eye on that taxi depot and just see like 11 out of 20. If it ever gets to... I didn't leave myself enough room to expand it. We'll just have to build another one. I did that on purpose. I mean, you could change it a bit. But the idea was that I didn't think it would fill up, really. And adding more bus routes and stuff would definitely help. So if we take a look at our bus routes, uh, we've just got two on the go at the moment. And they're doing fairly good, depending on, I, I guess, time of day. It's currently 6 a.m. In fact, let's turn on the day-night cycle just really quickly. There we go. Beautiful sunrise. Um, yeah, I've noticed actually, we it, depending on the time of day, like I said, you'll see a lot of people waiting for the bus, which I'm happy to see. It means that we're at a pretty good number right now where they were filling up to about 40. And uh, that means we don't really need to add any more vehicles if they're, if they're filling up halfway. I'd say that's totally fine. Um, but what I want to do is actually name these routes now that we've given district names. Now, there's bus line 1 and bus line 2. I kind of think it would be cool to name the buses numbers the way they are in real life. But I don't know if that would just be really confusing. So you could just name it the number 1. It's a bit boring to start off with the number 1, I guess. I was kind of thinking like the 23 and it's like okay that's the 23 and people just have to get to know it is that too much to ask for people because <laughs> obviously if you're just watching along or whatever i'm going to be like yeah the 23 is taking this route i mean to be honest i'll probably forget the number but i kind of think it'd be cool and then you could have the 23a or something that's going the opposite direction or you could just call it the 24 and then the other group could be like a bigger number so that they're we can tell that these two are grouped because they kind of cross over a lot i don't know maybe this one's getting barely any usage, actually, and they both do f practically the same thing. But they go in opposite directions. You can see a lot of taxis rolling. Anyway, I'd look forward to seeing what you guys think for naming conventions there. Because in real life, you know, buses are normally, at least in the UK and Ireland, are just named like, hey, it's the 33. And it doesn't really say anything else. Um, also, some buses are named by their end destination point or their most common street. So it's like, okay, well, it could be like uh, the 33 Kent or whatever, because this is Kent Street. So, you know. Let me know what you think. So we've added an extra taxi stand. I'm not going to change the bus routes just yet. The next things that we've unlocked in the previous episode were communications. So we can now build a post office with mailboxes and also telecom towers or radio masts. Telecom towers are a bit further down the line. Uh, but let's just start off with the first thing. So post offices handles it local incoming and outgoing mail. Post vans and trucks pick up mail from mailboxes around the city and citizens can also drop their mail off directly at the office so i was thinking that a good location for this would be right here so if i get rid of the infographics just for a second this is our zoning grid right we've got a large commercial area here and industry so it's kind of in between both commerce and industry and then we'll put some mailboxes out in the residential sectors to me that kind of makes sense it's quite a compact little area to be slamming this in but i think if we get rid of the path that's on the side here We'll probably have enough room. Good, those buildings stayed intact. Probably have enough room to upgrade this building, I should hope. So let's just pause it for a second. See where we can fit it in. Pop it right on the side there, is that good? Yeah, that should be fine. It leaves five tiles on the left. Let's just see, is there any way I can squeeze that over to the left even further? All right, nice. So it actually is clipping over that slightly, because if you remember, I did the bounding box thing there so that we expanded that out. All right, so we've got two upgrades available for this, mail storage extension and a post van garage or garage. The garage will fit on the back and the extension fits on the front. Perfect, love to see that. All right, so 45,000 a month, handles mail, select its operating districts. We could even tell it where to go and where to stay local to, but we'll just leave it as is. Um, it'll probably do with having the two things added on eventually but i guess i'll just leave it for now because we're a little tight for money and overspending not for the money itself but for the upkeep i guess all right let time play next up we'll put down the mailboxes so that acts as a mailbox right people will deliver things here anyway so we'll pop one i don't know somewhere further i don't think it really matters too much like, obviously, it matters centrally, but I mean, it's not going to be adding a lot of traffic or anything. Not like tons of people are waiting here or something. So, and I, I wonder, does it just collect mail automatically or do the do vehicles actually drive out of a factory, deliver their mail to a box and then that gets picked up? I don't think that happens. All right. So this area here is pretty central to the industry. And then I would put a mailbox. So there's a bus stop there. So somewhere kind of nearby, oh, maybe on the alternating path, actually, so. 
a mailbox here would be good, right? It's the end of this entire suburb, so you guys get one there. Then let's say there's a couple rows over, maybe another one here. And then you've got the higher density houses here. So perhaps in front of those guys would be good. And it's near enough to the offices as well. And the crematorium, I guess. Alright, so there's three. I'm being very, like, um, what's the word? Conservative with these. You could just slam them everywhere, I guess. But I'm hoping that that keeps things running just fine. Do we need one in the commercial area? Maybe. Maybe on the left side here. So you can circle around that area, but I would hope that a lot of people just bring it to this place. Okay, so then we also have this area down here. This might change in future. I'm just going to put one down almost temporarily to suit these. Actually, there's a corner store here. And that I forgot that that is actually mixed zoning. So people live in there and there's shops on the bottom. So if people are driving along this way, maybe just somewhere like there is totally fine as a post box. And that can somewhat even handle for that area. Kind of. I feel like they need their own one in the future, but we'll leave it for now. Alright, so that's all good for mailboxes. Next thing, then, I suppose, would be the radio masts. You want to give people internet. So, the higher up on the hills this goes, the better the coverage. But ultimately, these are quite small. They don't have much coverage at all. I don't know if they provide a lot of noise pollution or anything, do they? No, it says low, so I think it's okay. Uh, but also, they lose range the more buildings there are in the way. Especially when it's in the industrial area. So I was kind of thinking like in around the back of the high school here would probably be okay. As a fairly centered location. So I'll just keep it zoom out there. Don't know, should it have its own little alleyway that cuts in just for that? Probably not. I think it's probably just fine on the side of the road. Or just for even here as you come in. Yeah, not too sure which one would be better. We're going to have to add multiple anyway, so... I'll tell you what, I'm being very indecisive. We'll just pop it down. If it needs to move, it needs to move. Not a big deal. Whoops. I suppose, why not just snap it on, right? We'll snap that on right there. So just a tiny bit further back from the roundabout. Okay. Transmits mobile data, radio traffic, and TV signals. In case of emergencies, the masks are used to broadcast an alarm, which allows citizens to react to the event more rapidly. Had another car crash or something over here. Oh no, it's just an actual fire. Yikes. So if we click that house, we should be able to see a fire engine has been dispatched. It's on its way. I guess there's no sirens in this game, no? Oh, we can hear it. It's just really quiet. It's kind of refreshing after City Skylines 1 where it would be deafening. Okay. What happened there? Why did that happen? It like went to a junction and then the car was just like, nah, forget it. Fire engine. Oh my god, look at this. This is actually a nightmare. There's five hearses that are gathering people here. People have actually died in here. Waiting for a hearse and on fire. Yikes. And it's spreading as well. So where is this coming from now then? It's just left again. <laughs> Gotta follow this guy and see how it goes. Please don't delete at this junction again. Okay, good. I have no idea why the other ones didn't make it. I'd be kind of curious to know why. Waiting for that hearse to pull in. Come on, guys. Hearse? What are you doing? <laughs> like waiting for someone to cross that was miles away. Go, go, go. You're supposed to get out of the way for vehicles like this. Oh my god, the trail of hearses, man. It's so dark. What a blaze. Wow, the place is actually burned down. Holy sh... Now, I'll be really curious to know, like, can they just reverse and put these ones out, or do they have to... Oh my god, are you going to tell me that you're going to drive around? Oh yeah, you can turn here at least. Now you're on the wrong side of the road, but hopefully it's not too bad. Uh, 
It looks like they've got it. Looks like they've got it. Took a long time to get there, though. Holy crap. If it wasn't for that fire truck getting disappeared, I think it would have been okay. Anyways, that was kind of interesting just to see how it all works. Um, what were we doing? <laughs> oh, yeah, we're adding the telecom towers, giving people internet so they can actually call for help when their house begins to burn down. Um, yeah, so going to pop another one over here by the industry area. You want them to have good internet. So that's two. So now our coverage, if we just move this out of the way, pretty good. They've got pretty good internet. We could be a little bit better on the far side of town, maybe up this way. Could even give them internet further out here. Maybe just somewhere near the coal mining. Three is pretty good. Pretty good coverage then that way. Should be quite happy. I don't know if it improves businesses, right? Can be upgraded with a wireless network. Let's just check. So we put one near a business. We have a look at its efficiency. Network quality, negative 1%. I would hope that that's now going to be rectified. And I wonder, do farms have that same efficiency need? You'd think that they don't really need the internet as much as maybe offices or factory industry does, but I guess it always helps. It's just, it is a telecommunication tower. It does more than just internet. I'm appalled how healthcare is run in this city. Yeah, so that's actually something else we need to do. So... There's only four potential vehicles rolling out of that firehouse. So we're going to add an extension, more space for fire engines, 10,000. And the same for the police station. There's five cars patrolling out of six. More space for police vehicles, 18,000. It's another upkeep cost, of course, of 18,000 per month. So it's just going to expand those little buildings out and hopefully allow us to roll more things out when there's problems like that. If we go to services and check on fire and rescue, is that 80%? Let's just bring that back up to a hundo now. Education. Yeah, so in City Skylines 1, you could lower these numbers and it would just basically reduce the amount of vehicles. In this game, it also reduces the efficiency. Now, what's the efficiency of a fire house? I'm not sure. Is it at the speed of which the vehicle can get there? Is it the distance they can cover? I'm not sure. You'd think it's probably the distance, right? Because that's kind of what efficiency means when you're placing the building. It lights up the roads to let you know. But hopefully that just improves things. Maybe that's part of the reason why it, um, those guys clocked off last second, you know? I don't know. All right, so um, that's the telecom tower is done. The post and mail service is done. People are super happy. Remember, we're not taxing them very highly, and I'm doing that on purpose. 6% across the board, keeping it nice and low. Um, in fact, we almost want to lower this even further to attract more uneducated people, because that's what we're lacking in terms of unemployment. Let's have a look at our mandate that we outlined at the beginning of the game. Hey, unemployment down to 1.2%. How good is that? A lot more people have jobs, a lot more money in people's pockets, taxes to be earned, houses to be leveled up. Looking forward to it. Electricity is still viable and totally fine. We're still producing more than we consume, which means we're exporting a little bit, which is nice. All right, I think we're pretty much ready to begin the collegiate upgrade. Uh, it's 11 a.m. and it's gonna take a little bit of planning and a while to figure out. So the college building, we have to actually unlock, right? So development, education, college. Uh, first step towards higher education for teens and adults alike. All right, it's a big building because we built it in my other in my stream playthrough. Seven hundred and fifty thousand. We'll be going below a million if we build this. It can be upgraded with an extension wing and a library. The library sits on the side, on one of the sides, and it improves education uh, graduation rates. So, quite a large building. Similar, actually. Oh, it's actually the same size as the high school, huh? I didn't think so. It just felt like it was bigger, but I guess it's the same. So I'm going to be building a very similar sort of district here. People had mentioned, like, you should probably keep your education roughly close to each other, like, roughly in the same area, so that everyone kind of, kind of takes the same commute, as it were. And you just handle the commute with our larger roads now. So somewhere here is the plan, but I might have to do a little bit more of a time lapse again. The overall idea, similarly to last time, is car park, but maybe a bit bigger. Uh, maybe some amenities on the side, the library, the building itself, and then maybe other little things like the outdoor gym, some parks, things like that. So let's begin. I'm going to have to figure this one out. We're going to start off by at least leveling the terrain, right? Because it is a hill that goes all the way up to the back. 
Now we did the same thing on the other side, so just gonna kinda copy what that's done, which is just level this all the way out. To get us started, I reckon we'll just use a medium road. We can always change and upgrade it a little bit more in the future, and just kinda continue it out from here. This is its center point, and bring this right across. The next thing then is gonna be determining the size of this particular car park. Now that one was a medium car park, so I want to use a large on this one. So quite a big building actually. If we turn that sideways, how wide is it? So it's eight zones wide. Yeah, so, so being eight zones wide, if we turn it to face the inside, this one actually has a fence going all the way around it, so I don't think cars will just come in from any direction they can. You'll see that with the smaller car park. They'll just drive in from whatever, whatever side's best available for them. They don't give a F at all. Alright, I'm happy enough with this location. I'm hoping that the library fits in nicely to the side. I think it will. And that will fit on the side nicely. Yeah, it leaves just a little bit of a gap on the side. That's okay. Alright, so we've created a little compartment then for a way to get in around the back and potentially we could even use a few houses in at the back. Maybe some of those apartment blocks or something. But they will be sort of on a hill if we want to do something with this area. I guess what I have to do is figure out the size. So the size from there to there is 83. So let's say it's about 40 is the halfway mark. So we turn on our curve tool. We can turn off pretty much everything except for 90 degree angles and existing geometry. Actually, I've got an idea. This might be a bit weird, but it could look good. The We just unlocked in the previous episode the skate park. Oh, fits perfect. Right, so that road is going to wrap around and stop just after the skate park. Alright, so that's the skate park. So the skate park is going to go right there for the high school students to kind of play around with. Well, I guess it's not a high school, it's a college actually, but that's fine, don't worry about it. Hey, we did it! Milestone 6, Boomtown! So that's 1.4 million, we're saved. More development points, more map tiles, very importantly. And we'll have a look at what else we got soon. Cool, and now we can get a highway, which is two lane, one way. All right, it looks a little weird. So let's see if we can do something to clean this up now. Right, so I was even going to add a, a an alleyway, which might be a terrible idea, but let's see. Between these two areas here. That's basically as far over as it can go. I wish it could maybe just go a little further, but it seems like that's gonna be kind of it. Okay, that's a little bit better. I know it looks really chaotic right now. What's that called? Strawberry Lane, nice. Uh, the idea was that we could put even more little park things just in there. So we can clean this up though, obviously removing things like the crosswalks and certain traffic lights. If they're just one way areas and then we can prevent certain turns, you are not turning right here. That strawberry lane is just for buildings and really for people to walk along, nothing more. You are not to turn left as you come off that, you're just going straight and merging on, that's all this is. And you're definitely not turning right to get onto the highway or anything. Alright, so we've beefed up the highway coming in, and then they have that off ramp to get out, It's good. What else could we do here to make it even more confusing for people? Right, so the next complicated thing then, that I had planned anyway, was to somehow bring this roundabout down onto Lake Street here so that people could just merge out and then merge down. That actually seems to work really well. Man, the road tools in this game, they're so good. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, it looks crazy with the crosswalk. I don't know who's walking across that, but um, we can get rid of that crosswalk. I'm happy enough with that. I might shape it a little bit more in between episodes or something, but not too bad. Uh, but yeah, one of the last things that I think I'd like to try and do is if we switch to medium road and make a four lane divided road, create a little division point there that looks kind of cool and here as well and the really nice thing about this even though it's night getting to be dark now we can actually put a strip of grass in the center and also put trees in the center there we go so how, how about that huh how about them apples that looks really good i love it okay so now that we've basically positioned our college we have some activities for people the skate park and parking we can also now start to think about, I wanted to put in parks here, and then we can make a pathway go straight through the middle. Turn off our uh, snapping. In fact, we'll just start even 
Is there a way to just make that so that it... Yeah, there we go. Got a crosswalk straight away. Crosswalk here. Love to see it. Now what we can do is our bounding box trick, as we call it, to grab the grass and bring it out so that the park extends the whole way over, or at least visually does. All right, there we go. So now we have two parks in place and they actually have slightly different look and feel to them. This one has the sort of striped grass and this one doesn't. That kind of bothers me, but I am happy about everything else though. The colors are different for the tiles on this one and this one. So it just breaks it up a little bit and flipping their direction also just kind of tricks the mind a little bit and thinking that from a distance, it's just like two big parks. Uh, but yeah, it would have been nice to be able to actually connect in the pathways just to seamlessly join them on, you know? You can do that in City Skylines 1, actually. And I'm guessing if you had some sort of anarchy, which I think you can activate in the options. I, I don't want to really do that in developer mode. That's a bit too extreme for me. Just in, I'd be worried it would break or something. Uh, you could uh, bring those across to each other, but we'll leave it. Pretty happy with how that looks. I think that's kind of nice. Big park outside of the college. And uh, we have our parking lot for people to go to. So the college library is going to extend right on there. And it'll actually look like the parking is part of that, which would be nice. So what else needs to happen in this region? I guess um, I also wanted the outdoor gyms to go out here. So we've got outdoor gym that can fit in three outdoor gyms, just like that. And uh, yeah, again, we could do the bounding box trick and just bring our grass out to the very edges here. All right, so we got that problem again where one of it's striped grass and the others aren't, but I might fix that between episodes. We can also do just cover it up a little bit with some trees and pathways. All right, so there we go. There is nobody here, by the way, but there we go. We have a little outdoor gym area, skate park, a couple of big parks here, our big college. Uh, we've improved the road infrastructure again. I might have to fix that road a little bit because it's gone a little wonky in terms of its sh uh, shading and geometry, but oh, it's fun totally functional. I saw someone using the off-ramp a moment ago. People are using this area to get out, which is nice. Uh, so yeah, I'm quite happy with the, the turnout for that entire area. Now what we might want to do is just check in on certain things. So money is still going down at about that 10,000 rate. We're still gaining a slight population. Is anyone going to the college yet? got 41 students so I'm actually happy enough with that uh, efficiency is at 84% not enough employees yikes yeah I think it's time we actually just start expanding and get more people in because it looks like we've oversolved the unemployment issue we're at 0.1% now so everybody has a job basically <laughs> which is great but yeah we need to bring in more people so I'm gonna start developing out uh, maybe this little estate here just a little extra a little bit of extra housing in this area and then we'll start thinking about where the more more densely packed row housing is going to go. Alright, it's a pretty small development, but um, just a few extra houses that have been slammed in here along the Applegate Street, and then a couple of shops, actually, just on the corner. Uh, this house is a bit of an outlier, I guess, but yeah, I'm happy enough with that. We should see how it goes. And then I'm just leaving this as like a sort of, just the trees will kind of come in, the path will go through it. It might change eventually. I'm kind of been starting to think about like where the bridge is going to go across. And I was thinking like this main road's probably going to come down and eventually, well, maybe even sooner than that, cut across somewhere along this almost dotted line here. Maybe this could come across or maybe just further up. I don't know. I have to start thinking about that because they're going to be like high traffic points if we're going to have bridge connections leading across the city like that. 
so that's obviously just a very small amount of population moving in. We want to bring a lot more people in. So I'm going to start doing another uh, commerce area here, I think, along this main street. But then behind it, start doing some more row housing similar to these ones. So if we have a look at the contour lines, we've got that steady decline the whole way down or steady incline all the way up. Uh, so we're going to be kind of matching that. And I've already kind of gone with the five deep kind of look and feel here. So we're going to stick with that. Uh, although I would like to add in some row houses eventually somewhere that are a bit more compact. I'm just trying to think the way I'm designing this. I'm like, okay, if this is a commercial area here, a lot of cars and people are going to be trying to get there. I could build the houses up where they go up in rows like this. All right, so it's going to be a series of cul-de-sacs with commerce here and a path going between them. All right, I'm pretty happy with my zoning right now. It looks decent to me. I'm trying to think if further down the line we have a similar thing, but they can actually merge onto the highway again as a main road and even come in from there. But that might be a project for the future. An ore deposit down here. Don't know if we want to be tapping that or not. At least maybe for a while, and then it's like, oh, when the city really starts to grow, you could leave it and build over it or something. That's a maybe, but it is tempting because, of course, it could be used for the actual ore mining. We have coal, we have stone. We don't have an actual fertility for something like ore. One thing I'm pretty certain of, though, this can just continue over for now and just connect this up. And that way you've got a nice compact area again for some more row houses. Right, so I'm thinking here that we have small little shops, just three by threes or thereabouts. A pathway cutting in between them, just around the back. Maybe even a pathway going through the center would be probably good. And then a path that goes through, probably just continue that over actually, goes through this area as well. All right, I'm not too sure how that's really gonna look and turn out, we'll see in just a sec. Just gonna zone this now to be all row housing, pretty much. Alright, so I've just added in a little plaza and a little dog park there just to cheer people up a little bit. I do quite like the dual plaza look when they're near each other, so I'll just leave it the way it is. We'll just bring a path in between those two areas there. Hmm, I just noticed a sort of a logical weird thing going on here, um, but I don't know if it's the worst thing. So let's say you're just going to the shops, right? You want to go to the commercial zone here, so you're traveling left-hand drive, you're driving along, and you want to go to one of these shops. So let's say you pop in there, you get your bread and your milk, you hop back out, and then you have to follow the one-way road. Now, that would basically bring you onto the highway, or you can turn and go into the high school, and you can take a right and go around and get back out. But that that's just one of those things where I see a problem there, right? It's like, oh, I'm forcing traffic to kind of go into this way and come back down and around if they want to get out. Is that the worst thing? Maybe not, I don't know. Tough to say. You could also, I suppose, just do this. You could turn right, go up here, then bank left, and you circle back around, you're, go you're golden. Now, they might actually even be able to do a, a 180 here. A few people might do that. We'll see. Um, all right, anyway, so I, let's just continue zoning. All right, so I've basically done a little bit of public transport overhaul, even just here at the beginning, and I'm sure it'll just change episode to episode as we add and expand more things. But effectively, what we've got now is three bus lines. We've got the 23, 33, and 43. Super easy to remember, huh? It's the blue line, red line, and yellow line for now, if you want to think of it. Same numbers correspond. So the blue line will be the 23, and it's pretty much how it was at the beginning, right? So we go through Beechwood Gardens, now named, and pick up a bunch of people from the row housing. We then collect also from the uh, kind of more dense uh, housing here, more medium density housing here. And then we continue down into the industrial area with a couple of stops along the way to um, actually that one's not even used but a couple of stops in the industry and then we come down back around and we drop people off again just outside the high school and also there was row houses here I don't know I'm kind of tempted to think that this could be shops in the future but anyway drop them off there or pick them up and then loop back around so that's it right so it's just a, a, a fairly small closed loop of hitting Beechwood Gardens District 
Sunset Town, and then Sterling Meadows. So it's kind of like delivering between those three. So the next route is the 33, and this one's definitely going to change, but I just thought I should show you where it's going right now. I definitely need more nuanced routes, because right now I'm trying to do catch-all routes with them. and uh, You'll see why I think logically it doesn't quite make sense, but happy enough just to let it run for a while and see where we need to adjust it in the future. Anyways, it's the red line, the 33. So... Uh, the 33 starts at 63 Kent Street, right? So we're starting at Kent Street here where there's a bunch of parks and there's going to be a bunch of row housing on either side. So a lot of residences here that can kind of filter out onto this one if they want to. And the first port of call is then over at the college. So we're going up, taking a left turn, circling around and coming back out to then do the same over at the high school. So we're cutting in, getting to the high school and then coming back out. Then we're continuing along to the residential area, the sort of mini suburbs here of Meadow Street and Applegate Street, picking people up here if they want to go further on into the town. So as they do that, they're going to be cutting across the industrial area. And there's a bit of a connection point here where the three lines actually intersect, uh, basically right next to each other. So hopefully people can kind of make some connections if they want to. They can kind of already do that in certain places here, like... If you get dropped off, let's say, at the high school, you can easily just walk across and get to this one to go in the other direction if you need to just make one quick transfer to get out to there or something. I don't know. Just as an example, uh, they, they can walk a little bit to go somewhere. Anyway, as we continue along, we then arrive at the commercial area, which is going to be Elkwood Heights. Right, so our first drop off then is just there, Elkwood Heights. I haven't let time run, by the way. The buses that are around are just the ones from before at the moment. Um, so at the edge of the commercial area, dropping people off at Elkwood Heights, and then at the other edge, we're picking people up or dropping them off again. I keep saying that. I don't know what other word to use. There's a stop here, I guess. <laughs> then we come back around, we come down the roundabout, and we close the loop. So that's effectively the red line. Now the 43 is the yellow line. It's actually, it could do with being a bit brighter, couldn't it? Maybe we could brighten that up a bit. Make it bolder, because it's kind of hard to see. I guess it's yellowish, it's kind of hard to see against this type of filter anyway. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so this one is to take people out to the far industry, the specialized industry that we have. So if you want to follow this one again, basically, uh, where do we start? Well, I guess we'll just say that we're starting here at the farms, right? So we're starting over at the farms. It comes down along this road, drops people off, picks people up. It's a stop. <laughs> and then we come along, take a right turn, and then we have a stop at the mining. So there's no way to get into the forestry that easily, but people do walk pretty far. So if they tend to get a bus and they get out here... They can kind of walk to any of the four that's next to this area. It's a bit of a distance, but not too bad. It's like a 10-minute 10, 10 walk, I guess. Uh, anyway, we continue along to the next ore industry in case people are lazy. Might as well put a stop there. We come back up and around. We're back heading towards the town, and then we drop people off or pick them up again for coal. Then we go along our main road here, and then we cut in through the estates and down straight. Oh, yeah, and then we actually join on to this spot here. So it's a crossover spot for them as well. And it's next to another red line. We continue back down. Same goes into here. And then that's it. It's going to come back out and around. It links into this area. Comes back out. And then it goes back out to the, uh, the farms. So it's kind of interesting. I was getting confused for a sec. Because I guess the two colors are overlapped. So it actually makes its own color. It's like yellow and blue. So it's kind of a darkish, grayish, purpley color. It's kind of interesting. Um, that it did that because it looks like its own line. It's kind of confusing or hard to see, but I guess it just kind of lets you know in a way that two lines are, like, are on top of each other. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's kind of it. So let's just let time play. The houses are going to come in now. We'll see what people are saying and how they're feeling. We'll let time speed up to times two. It's still 9 p.m. actually. And then we have to check on how these buses are actually going to be handled, as it were, because I'll be curious to see how many get put on each route. This by far is the longest route. So I, but I don't think it needs that many buses. Let's put it down to six. It's the one that goes out to the industrial area. So just as a reminder, blue line is the 23, red line 33, and the yellow line 43. Yellow is easy to remember because it's industry. It goes out to the specialized industry, so it's yellow. The blue and red is just two random kind of colors, so we can see and identify the buses from a distance. So you'll see probably, yeah, there we go. We've got some yellow line buses now, the 43, heading out to work to get started we'll just keep letting time speed up obviously a lot of people aren't going to go out to work till like 6 a.m maybe so we can see if perhaps that um encourages them to do so meanwhile we have all these houses coming in now our smaller estates here as well with the more random normal ish houses not the row houses the low density uh residential then we actually have a few shops along the sides here 
These ones are all very extremely uniform, actually, considering what they are. And I guess we're on a hill, so the textures have kind of broken a little bit on the sides there. But if we could cover up with some trees, it wouldn't look too bad, I don't think. Um, we could maybe extend the bounty boxes. Are these European? They look American to me or something. Did I zone it wrong? No, it's European. Yeah, I don't know. I guess, I guess so. I guess the American ones would look more like... I always uh, reference like Malcolm in the Middle, like that kind of house from Malcolm in the Middle. Those would probably be the equivalent of the low density for the American theme. Alright, uh, people have told me to pay attention to Chirper, so let's do it. I'm in love with how our improved homes look, says Rusty Johnson. Devin Hopkins, the smog is just unbearable. Someone should really deal with the air pollution. Saw them complaining about that before. Couldn't find any, though. Air pollution does blow away from the town. And industrially... In terms of the industry, it's all blowing out that way. There is the crematorium blowing smoke over the offices, so maybe it's the people in the offices saying it. I guess we could find out by seeing where that person worked. God, they talk so fast. What time is it at? 23.41. The smog is just unbearable. That was Devin Hopkins. Where do you work? At Walmsbury's. And that's in the... Maybe he's just complaining about it in the actual industrial area. In Sunset Town. Let's see how this is doing. 26 employees. Seeing as we got that cash injection, I say just go for it. We'll put down the library now. Because we know we're going to eventually. Nice. Oh yeah, it's a very old style, English style, Oxford-esque college building, I suppose. Looks decent. Wait for a little bus stop. Someone's waiting. Oh, they actually sit down. Wow, it's the first time I've actually seen an animation in the game. I noticed there was one for at a gym as well. Someone was actually, like, working out. So maybe they're just slowly adding them in and not telling people, or they were there already and I didn't notice. Um, yeah, because the people, they, they, ain't, they ain't skating. I'll tell you that much. But they might be lifting weights. I definitely saw someone doing it before. They were, like, using pull-up bars. Mmm. Mmm. Taking a little selfie at the gym. <laughs> Maria, she's like, yeah, I'm at the gym. Takes a photo and then she's like, yeah, screw that. I'm obviously not going to the gym. It goes over to short market, get some uh, milkshake. That's enough gym life for a day, huh? Sit down, take a break, Maria. I don't know why I'm so harsh against Maria. It's just the idea of someone going into a gym to take a selfie and then walk away. <laughs> it's quite funny. All right. The 33, it's got six passengers on it. Love to see that. So it's going to hit the high school next. We'll just follow this around for a while. The hell is that person doing? Oh, they're pulling in there. Is that a mail van? Oh, it is. It's a post van. And they're going into the back of the building. That's quite interesting, isn't it? Destination Treasure Trove Comics. Don't they hit... Aren't they supposed... Oh, yeah, you know what? I actually didn't give them mail out this way thinking about it but I was gonna say don't aren't they supposed to just go collect from uh what are these called mailboxes <laughs> I was gonna say mail storage sites anyway I got, I got I need to take a break anyways so yeah so I thought that's cool that they're going in using the building and everything but yeah I guess we have to put, place one of these down in a moment I won't do it right away though yeah interesting going to pick up their stuff and then they come straight back out nice to see all right we'll continue the journey this is an old oh no it's not an old bus it's been recolored again Red light, let people cross, no big deal. And now we're coming in to drop people off or pick them up from... No? Okay. Just went by that stop. I guess there was no one... Get... That's actually interesting. So there was no one waiting, and I guess no one was getting off there. So they just drive straight past. That's cool. That's realistic. like to see it. It's actually kind of an interesting info view where we can actually see the lines without changing the color too much. I think you can do that, actually. Clicking this... And then just pressing I. Yeah, there we go. So what are you up to now? So one, you actually dropped off people over there then. Cool. What's our problem? High rent. Your guys' problems? Not enough customers. Well, we're, we're connecting customers to you, so you should be okay in the future. Um, yeah, I actually, we got rid of most of our zoning. I did mean to zone just a little bit more factories over on this side. So let's just do that now real quick. Um, do we want them to latch onto this side? Yeah, I guess so. Alright, so let's just get rid of this. Get the rezoning. Nice big thick factory right in there. 
All right, cool. I could probably do something else in future. It comes out a bit unnecessarily far, but I, it's meant a bit more demand. Let me have a read of, um, I've not been reading Chirper very well, especially when time is playing fast. All right, let's see what other people are saying. So many people are getting sick. The, sh the shitty? The city should really look after health better. People in the city are not looking well. Uh-oh. The city is incredibly noisy. Everyone just complains all the time. Sugar Spike, we're happy to announce our new factory. I'm seeing plenty of good-looking luxury items. Our education system is amazing. We have overabundance of electricity, and we're selling some. Doesn't feel safe to go out at night. All right, let's check on a few of these things. Let's turn off a few of these things. Ambulances, hearses, all that go away. Citizen health. So that's our citizen health metrics from... So let me read it. It affects their happiness, which in turn affects their work efficiency and other behavior. Areas with bad health indica indicate that citizens living there don't have sufficient access to healthcare services. Providing adequate healthcare services and controlling air, ground, and water pollution are ways to improve it. So, water pollution. Hmm. Surface water flow. What's that one? Ground. Oh, it's the groundwater deposit. We don't need to see that. Groundwater pollution. So, the, oh, I see. The groundwater deposit that's under there has been completely polluted by the industry we built next to it. But that's okay. No, we're not using it. So it shouldn't be. Shouldn't really be a concern. The water pollution sources and ground pollution sources. Yeah, that's all fine. Average water pollution is zero though. So like, what's the problem there? Nothing. I would hope. Right. Noise pollution. Average noise pollution is zero. I mean, is that even? Can that even be accurate? It can't be zero percent. <laughs> So this is the noise pollution terrain color. There's a little bit over there. So average noise pollution across all the households. So for households, it's zero. Okay, that's fine by me. I'll take it. I'll believe it. I mean, I'm seeing a difference in color here on this house and this one, this one and this one. So I'm surprised it doesn't say like one, two, three, maybe 5% or something, but it is what it is. Ground pollution, also zero. Again, that affects households and that does look right. So I don't see why they're complaining there. And then air pollution, also zero. So I'm going to discount anyone that's complaining about any of that. If that's all the pollution effects, though, why would healthcare or average health be at 61? Because if we have a look at our clinic, there's 12 patients out of 100. So I don't know what the problem is. Only one out of five vehicles in use. And when we had a look at this, the reach, the healthcare coverage is really good. You can get everywhere from this one clinic. And there's only 4,700 people living here. One clinic is reasonable, I think, but apparently not. All right. All right, so it's 9.18 AM. I actually kind of missed the rush hour thinking about it. I wonder how we're doing. So let's check on our usage map now. So 48% for the blue line, the 33, oh, sorry, the 23. That's all right. So the 23, why is that so popular, huh? Picking people up from all these row housing and bringing them down towards the school area, the high school area, that could be part of it. There's three vehicles assigned. Ticket price, $8. 23 people on that one, 25 on that one. That's coming back in, what the hell? Oh, that's the noise of the mast. That's pumping 5G into everybody. <laughs> yeah, okay. I got another one right there. And there's people waiting next to their stop. That's good. That's all right. Could be better. I would like to see it a bit more full, a bit more people using it. Maybe it takes a little bit of time before they get used to the idea that they'll be using taking the bus. I don't know. I wonder how many people have started to use this one, though. So 20 passengers for the yellow line going out to the specialized industry. I mean, I'm kind of happy that anyone's using it. I mean, seven people on a bus is seven people not using their cars. Speaking of, what the hell is all everyone parking here for? Yeah, see, I feel like if we banned parking completely out this way. I guess there's no problem with it. I'm trying to think of, like, I can't think of a logical reason why I would. But, yeah, they're just driving out here and then they go to work, I guess. Work at the logging, right? So, her destination is Soft Ends. That's a strange name for forestry. Wow, it's five out of five. Nice. I can actually see new, tra um, new trees appearing as well. We have a forwarder here. And then what do we have here? A wheeled harvester. People are working in their various little buildings. That's great. I'm happy to see that it's working at least. 
The library's looking good. We now have 258 students. That's not bad at all. And the graduation rate's going to be improved thanks to the library. It says that time to graduate is six months. And this speeds it up. It just says provides a chance of better uh, to improve graduation. I think it's 10 months by default, so that's pretty nice. All right, I think that's pretty much all there is to kind of cover. So I'm really happy with, especially the lighting here in the morning, how everything looks. Uh, might want to try and clean up some of the parking if we can. You know, it's a bit much where they use every aspect of the street. A, a street like this, I feel like we could get rid of the parking on and just let them park down the actual kind of rows, as it were, and that's fine. And then we'll provide some bigger car parks or something for them to use. I'm really happy with the college area, especially here in fall, the way we have the leaves turning color, we got the multiple parks, we have the library now in position, people are actually using the parking of the building itself, which is super nice, so good patch, good on the devs. Um, we have that big car park there, not many people using that, very very busy junction right here, wish I could have made it a roundabout, <laughs> I like to have roundabouts everywhere, but um, yeah, I guess it just is what it is, it's not really, I said that a lot actually in the last episode, but yeah. When I say that, I mean, like, I'm not going to change it. It's going to just have to deal with it for a while. Perhaps in the future, we could add an asymmetrical road here. That would actually clear the parking on either side and allow them to turn and free up the lanes a bit. So you can turn right, straight, left. Might clear up some of the traffic piling up the junction. High school's looking good. Telecom tower is looking good. Haven't really seen much going on with the post fans, although we did spot one or two going around before. Quite happy that we got that in there. We've got new factories in there as well. Cleaned up some of the suburbs out this way. Pretty happy. I think the town's coming along quite nicely. And of course now all of our specialized industry as well. So we are a boom town indeed. Quite happy with it overall. Money could be better. <laughs> Still losing nearly 10 grand uh, an, an hour. Uh, so yeah, that's going to be... No, it's 240,000 a month. So yeah, much bigger and much more important. Um, but yep, it looks like our ore industries have just leveled up m to the max super quick. Very last thing to check production wise. We're making over a thousand tons of wood in surplus and 800 tons of stone in surplus and 536 of coal in surplus. So in theory, our coal power plant should be burning our own coal. It's got 20 tons stored in there right now. And uh, I would like to see at some point a truck going from out here delivering it over to our old our own coal power plant before exporting the rest. That'll be the ideal anyway. All right, that's going to have to be it. Please do let me know what you think of everything that's been built so far. Please do give me naming suggestions. That's the most important thing, I would say. And then obviously just suggestions in general of what you'd like to see and where. Um, and yeah, I just want to also say thank you. The support on this has actually been really crazy and really just really humbling. So just appreciate it a lot. Just know that if you made it all the way to the end here especially, do appreciate you. Dropping a like on the video really does help. And you carried me over the threshold for 100,000 subscribers. So I appreciate that a lot. Um, and yeah, you made me very happy towards the end of the year here. So thank you. All right, that's going to have to be it for me. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.